As with any genre, we have our fair share of odd ducks in the world of MMOs. Where many developers try to mimic World of Warcraft, the men and women responsible for the creation of these titles have, in many cases, strayed so far off the beaten path, one has to wonder if they're even on the trail anymore. While it's admirable that they were striving to be different from their peers, one has to wonder if they may perhaps have taken things a bit too far. These absurd examples of MMOs are so niche that even those few who've heard of them consider them strange. Of course, and this is something of a distressing thought, it's certainly possible that at least a few of these developers featured today never really intended their titles to be unusual. That's simply how they turned out. It's how they felt their game should look. In other words, their creative vision was akin to an ecstasy-addled acid trip. Tale of Tales, The Endless Forest. The first title on this list actually has me slightly intrigued. The premise is a fairly simple one. You play as a deer in the forest. You do deer things, you interact with other deer, players, and occasionally the forest gods. There's no combat, no class or leveling system, simply a beautiful, peaceful forest brimming with mystery and filled with deer people. It's bizarre, yes, but it's also strangely relaxing and therapeutic. I'll say now, it's definitely not the strangest game on this list. It's really a shame Glitch never got off the ground. The browser-based MMORPG actually had some very cool, very creative ideas regarding what to do with the genre. Instead of focusing on combat, developer Tiny Speck instead placed an emphasis on collaborative crafting and gathering. The world, too, was quite unique, with an emphasis placed on imagination. The game space itself was set in a realm imagined by 11 godlike giants, each of which pertain to a particular aspect of nature. Donating items to the giant shrines would eventually win a player favor, gaining them an emblem which would give them a number of in-game bonuses. What's more, players could make lasting, persistent changes to their surroundings through quests and the like. Unfortunately, the game failed to garner enough interest and shut down back in 2012. So here's yet one more example of a game that's strange in kind of an amazing way. Created by Eskiel Steenberg, there are a few things that make the sandbox MMO love unique and a bit odd to boot. There's the graphics, which strongly resemble an 1800s oil painting. There's the environment, which is 100% procedurally generated and changes randomly. No small feat for an MMO. There's also the gameplay, a blend of first-person action and cooperative world building. Players must embark into the wilderness from their settlements in order to seek out tokens which will allow them to access better tools, defenses, and abilities. I would have quite enjoyed being present during developer NetDevil's moment of inspiration, the point at which it decided it would create Auto Assault. The premise of the title is that basically you drive cars. Okay, there's a little more to it than that. The best description I can give is that it's Mad Max meets science fiction as an MMO. Though perhaps a better analogy would be World of Warcraft meets Pixar cars. Players can choose from one of three races, and each race can choose from one of four classes. Your class doesn't actually change anything about your character. It changes what your vehicle does and how it functions in combat. The only time you actually see your character is when you're wandering around town. So now we're starting to get into the head scratchers. Dungeon Party is basically what you'd get if you mashed Diablo and Dota together, then vomited a bunch of off-the-wall comedy into the pot. Its strangeness stems from the fact that it doesn't take itself remotely seriously. It's still a complete oddball of a game, but in a unique way. While just acting strange doesn't necessarily mean the game is strange, the fact that there's no experience, no leveling up, and a lack of progression makes the game almost pointless for MMO fans. I'm sure I'm going to catch a bit of flack for this, but if you really stop to think about it, Second Life is probably one of the weirdest MMOs ever made. At this point, it barely even fits the classification anymore. It's like it's become some sort of educational video game slash social media chimera, based almost entirely around wish fulfillment. You can be and do whatever and whoever you desire. I'll just let that statement hang in the air for a moment and mention what usually happens when a bunch of people on the internet are given absolute freedom. Nothing good. Stories abound of skeezy individuals, destroyed lives, and ruined relationships. Still, for all the wretched hive of scum and villainy, it's still not the most messed up MMO on the list. At the same time though, you've got to admit, it's a pretty weird concept. So now we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. If any of you are familiar with the Queen's Blade anime series, you already know what's coming here. Queen's Blade, Scarlet Blade in North America, features primarily over-sexualized animated up female characters. In this case, the developers have made no secret of what most of their fan base will be for. See, Queen's Blade Online is free to play, and one of the items in the cash shop unlocks the ability to remove your character's lingerie. Basically, it's a game designed to let you oogle nude anime girls. Deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole we go. 
The rather short-lived action MMO Pangea boasted itself as an adult MMORPG based on the themes of women, gambling, and war. It featured full nudity, though that in itself doesn't make it terribly unusual. On the surface, it actually seemed like a fairly well-made, if somewhat derivative, MMORPG. Then, on digging deeper, things get worse. So very, very much worse. Giant dung heaps as enemies, opponents that lose their clothing as you deal damage to them, enemies that attack you with milk, gratuitous nudity and sexual references, naked workhouse? The game became worse and worse the more one played it. Nowadays, it's fairly difficult to find much information on Pangea Online. I think most people genuinely just want to forget that it existed, truth be told. Otherverse, which styles itself as an adult social network, also serves as the back end for an adult MMO by the name of Red Light Online. Think of it as another version of Second Life, but with more of everything that makes Second Life creepy. Just a quick walk through anywhere in the game will lead you to a warped, twisted wonderland, the likes of which you'll never see anywhere. Desperate, frightened, and alone, you will wander the winding, labyrinth-themed streets, trying to make real friends and make that special connection. This 3D social center for adults is just too strange for me. So, speaking of Second Life clones, Socialotron is the quivering abomination born of an unholy union between RuneScape and Second Life. This one actually crosses the line from bizarre to more than a little disturbing. The game takes place in post-apocalyptic London, allows for user-created content, and allows you to upgrade your genitalia and sexually assault other players. And I'll just leave it at that. So what are some of the weirdest and strangest MMOs that you've ever played? Maybe it was just a random moment in a normal MMO that causes you to curl up in the fetal position? Whatever the case, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. What's up, guys? Mark and Bethany here with MMO Attack to shed some light on the coming year of 2014 to feature what game should be on your radar. That's right, just like Christmas items at a department store, we're jumping the gun and showing up way too early. But hey, nothing like a little hype in.